She was a mere baby just 14 years ago, but today she's a grown woman. How is that possible? What could have happened to force this innocent child into early adulthood? Is it some sort of Russian plot? I'm Dexter Dolt, and tonight on Dolt Line 6020, we dig deep into a bad mitzvah in Chucktown. Here's Keith Moranson. Edna Schmalz was born in Chucktown, Chaz Tune, or Charleston, as the map makers insist on calling it. But the story really begins, innocently enough, in a town called the Big Easy, the Crescent City, or New Orleans, as the mavens like to call it. On May 18, 2002, Don Schmall and Mickey Vanilla got married in what neighbors called the schmaltziest ceremony anyone had ever seen. The place was overflowing with goyim and shikses, as well as some of the chosen people. There was food, drink, and vows of commitment. There was dancing and laughing. Don did his shtick and even got a little naughty. It was a night no one would ever be able to forget. Then they went back to Charleston. On August 18, 2004, something magical happened. Out spring Edna, a small but cute version of both of them. Fortunately, she looked more like Mickey than Don. Her parents fawned over her and even gave her food and water. Don made sure that she had a life of basic needs, but Edna wanted more. She wanted to be a little princess with a life filled with gum and candy. Don had other plans for her, plans that involved the space program, or more precisely, cosmonaut camp. On the other hand, Mickey wanted her to be a down-to-earth, all-American gal. But neither of them could watch her every move, so they resorted to the next best thing, another clump uh, daughter. Coming up, who was this new kid, and why is she always hanging around Edna? When we come back to A Bad Mitzvah in Chucktown. Brought to you by Rich Raisin's Retirement Sanctuary. We are different from our competitors. We are not just a retirement home, we are a retirement sanctuary. That means everyone is safe, comfortable, and most importantly, rich. That's what we think here at Rich Raisins. Rich Raisins is a retirement sanctuary specializing in the finest dining, bingo, denture care, bedrooms, and more. But don't take our for it. Look at all these happy old, they really enjoy their stay at Rich Raisins. So go on in today. We're waiting for you. Rich Raisins is the best that can be. The new kid's name was Lindsay, and she was very cute indeed. Call me Meshuggana, but I had a feeling she was the key to this mystery. I knew she had schmutz on her from the first time I saw her photographs. Lindsay stuck to Edna like flies on uh, something sticky. Everywhere she went, every moment of the day, Lindsay kept close. They played together, they walked together, they danced together. Lindsay even attended the same school and listened for any gossip the Yentas might spread about Edna. But she wasn't keeping an eye on her for Don. She was doing it for Mickey. Her mission was clear. Don't let Edna out of my sight and report all questionable behavior back to Mickey. Don became frustrated and doubled down with his communist conversion plan. At one point, he even tried to convince Lindsay to join him. 
but his spiel fell on deaf ears. Neither Edna nor Lindsay were responding to Don's manifesto the way he had hoped. In fact, they were becoming more American than ever. He needed to lure her back to cosmonaut camp. Coming up, Edna uses cosmonaut camp to polish her comedic skills and convert her patrician friends. When we come back to A Bad Mitzvah in Chucktown. Brought to you by Flavor Funnel. Tired of drinking water the old-fashioned way? God dang it! Now you don't have to with the amazing Flavor Funnel. Our friendly consultants are waiting, so call now. The camp seemed to work, and Edna increased her popularity by kibitzing with her friends, making fun of capitalists. Her Russian mentor, Don, thought it helped her schmooze with her American friends. Her all-American mother thought it was nothing but kibitzing. One day, Mickey thought she was winning when she heard Edna say, Gum and candy and diamonds. <laughs> Don went into a panic. He did everything in his power to keep her moving right. They picked berries at his comrades' collective berry farms. He tried to train her for the invasion at an underground shooting range, and he made her join some athletic groups to help spread the word. But Lindsay and Mickey pushed back. They forced her to enjoy the fruits of capitalism. It seemed to work, until one day, Edna delivered a haunting smile that made everyone feel uneasy. Coming up, how did it happen? How did this beautiful smile become this menacing communist grin? When we come back to A Bad Mitzvah in Chucktown. Brought to you by The Office, coming to a theater near you. Everyone always thought Edna had a beautiful smile. That is, until some schmuck turned her into a pinko commie. It's hard to imagine this pretty little girl contorting her face in so many ways that it ultimately became the Leave it to Beaver smile, or what the FBI has coined the Russian smile of forced labor. With that smile comes the full responsibility of adulthood, where she will soon have to work on the collective farms and bear the children. I think you're way, way, way too much out of this. And where do you come up with this collective farm nonsense? I still don't understand. Because she was picking berries. I saw pictures. Oh, okay. yeah, that's not a collective farm, Dave. It was Champley's Blueberry Farm on 17 in Hollywood, South Carolina. Pull your head out of your, you know what? What about when she was using that shovel on a bunch of shells and stuff? It's one of the rare times she's ever picked up a utensil outside of a fork or a spoon to work and do something to break a sweat, I can assure you. Okay, then what about that stupid smile? <laughs> I'm going to remind you, you taught her the smile. I can't drive and chastise you at the same time, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job. You taught her the smile. Thank you. Oy vey. <laughs> okay, again, with the Jewish and the Yiddish references. First of all, let me remind you, you're not even Jewish. That's number one. 
number two. Here's a word you might not know. It's a Shonda that you keep using our language. My people. You understand? My people. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next time on Don't Line 6020, we're going to do a show called What About Lindsay? Uh, pardon me. You, you keep... Uh, let me rephrase it. How long do I need to know you before you get my name right? Vicky, Vicky's name right, Lizzie, not Lindsay, not Libby, and Ella's name right. What are we, on 25 years? How much longer before you're finally going to get it right, David? If you named him something a little easier for me to remember, that would be, that would help a lot, Don, Ron. <laughs> well, Ella's name is four letters. How much easier can we get than that? That's what I'd like. Uh, but Lindsay's and, not. And it's ridiculous that we're having this discussion. She's 14 years old. You've had 14 years to put it to memory. Well, yeah, but I didn't know she was going to be a woman already, or I would have memorized it. But if it was 18, I would remember it by then. And now, an adorable little ditty sung by Aunt Tavid and Uncle Joel, written especially for Edna, uh, Ella. Happy Bat Mitzvah to you. You're a teenager, it's true. You're 14 years old, and you're also part Jew-ish. <laughs>